Hi, my name is Mark Beschel. I'm a senior herpetology keeper here at the Jackson Zoo and Gardens. I've been here for over eight years, and I've been in the herpetology department the entire time. Right now, I'm the primary caretaker of the Save the Frogs Amphibian Conservation Center, uh, where I work with all different kinds of amphibians there. Um, and I also work with all the other venomous snakes, alligators, lizards, turtles, and tortoises we have here as well. All amphibians do go through the process of metamorphosis just in different ways. Uh, some amphibians metamorphose internally or within the egg completely. The egg to tadpole to froglet stage that we have very commonly here in North America is not always the norm in many other countries. In many other countries, amphibians go through direct development where they do lay eggs, but the eggs go through the tadpole stage and everything in the egg and hatch out as little tiny frogs, toads, salamanders, etc. There are several species that also give birth to live uh, Again, not all amphibians start out in the water. Uh, several different kinds of salamanders actually lay eggs on land and they go through direct development as before, where they completely develop within the egg. The parents will even guard the eggs to make sure that no predators come by. Turtles and tortoises are kind of one of those lumped together bunch of animals. You can call everything collectively a turtle, but you can't call a turtle a tortoise. So there is a difference. Uh, turtles and tortoises are mainly different just in how they're built. Most tortoises have uh, pillar-like legs. They're able to lift their bodies completely off the ground. They don't have webbed toes, webbed feet. Some tortoises can swim, but not all tur tortoises can swim. Most turtles can swim, and uh, many turtles are adapted for almost fully aquatic lifestyles. Lizard eggs can vary in size greatly depending on the species of lizard. Uh, several different kinds of small geckos, even the anoles that we have around here, lay very, very tiny eggs, less than a quarter of an inch in length, versus Komodo dragons, for example, that could have eggs about twice the size of a chicken egg. Being a longtime reptile hobbyist and longtime reptile keeper, it's always difficult to say whether or not reptiles or amphibians can show emotion. Without a doubt, different reptiles and amphibians have personalities. I've worked with many different species of animals and even within the same species of, say, lizards. I've had some lizards that you can just kind of pick up, move, they're pretty relaxed, scratch them on their backs, they seem to enjoy it. I've had other lizards of the same species get the name Ripper or Killer for a reason. Uh, so we, we're not nearly as affectionate with those particular animals. So while they de definitely do have personalities and, and different personality traits, I don't know that they really show affection. I've never had my turtles or snakes at home jump up and wag their tails when I get home. They do get a little testy if I don't feed them on time, but uh, I, I can't really say yes or no on the affection.